we ready for the jury? Or do we have the motion in lemonades? Okay, if I could just get those, I'd appreciate it. So we do have the order for Ms. Hurd's motion to Your Honor. Okay. Mr. Depps, Mr. Moniz, and I just agreed to it. Okay. I don't have it printed, but I can tell you, Your Honor, based on the representation he gave me, it is agreed. Okay. And we will have it printed as soon as I can, but we're not right. going to obviously hold up court with that. That's fine. Thank you very much. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you, Mr. Murphy. All right. Are we ready for the jury then? Yes. Okay. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right. Your first witness. Uh, we call Zombrowski. Yes. All right, Kristen Zombrowski. Is she outside? She is. Okay. Kristen Zombrowski. Solemnly swear or affirm to testify truthfully in this case under penalty of law. You have to verbally answer, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Hi. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, Ms. Dombrowski. Would you please state your full name for the record? Alisa Christine Dombrowski. Ms. Dombrowski, what relationship, if any, do you have with Johnny Depp? He's my younger brother. How much older are you than Johnny? Two and a half years. Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to ask you a few questions about your and Johnny's childhood. Where did you all grow up? Um, we were born in Kentucky and we moved to Florida when we were kids. Who lived in your household with you and Johnny? Our mom, our dad, um, we have an older brother and older sister and Johnny and I. Who was the youngest child in your family? Johnny. Would you please tell the jurors what your relationship with Johnny was like when you were growing up? <laughs> um, Johnny and I were very close. Uh, with, with having the older brother and older sister, we were the two younger ones, so we were really close, and we basically were together all the time. Um, we played together, we <laughs> played Hot Wheels, we, you know, played uh, Batman and Robin, where we each had a role in that. Um, <laughs> and he's probably gonna be embarrassed if I say any of this, but, um, you know, we, practiced, you know, karate kicks with each other and chopping. We were just friends. We were like best friends. What was Johnny like as a young boy? Jackson, Your Honor, 404. If you want to approach.
as I was saying, Ms. Dombrowski, uh, what was Johnny like as a little boy? Um, he was he was a, a a shy, sweet little boy. He had a, a very caring personality, um, but also was a he was a little bit of a, a clown. He loved to you know play tricks on us or try to scare us. He was a, a very typical happy little boy. Objection, Your Honor. Move to strike four. four. Your Honor, I'm going exactly where I said I was going. All right, I'll stay in the, the, the last part of her answer, um, and we'll go forward from there. Thank you very much, Your Honor. Ms. Dombrowski, how would you describe your parents' relationship? That was complicated. Would you please explain to the jury what you mean when you say your parents' relationship was complicated? Our parents were, they had two um, completely different personalities, and where our father was a uh, also a very kind, patient, loving, gentle uh, man. And our mom was the opposite. She was very high strung, very nervous, uh, anxiety, angry. So they, they were completely opposite people. What was your mother's first name? Betty. Did your mother, Betty, ever get angry with your father? Yes. How would your mother express her anger toward your father? Mom would, she would scream, she would yell at him, um, she would hit him, call him names, that kind of thing. Did your father ever hit your mother back? No, dad, dad never reacted. Um, when mom would hit him or scream at him. If he didn't hit her back, how, if at all, did he react? Basically, um, he would let her scream and get it out or hit and, and, and be done. And the, the, the way that you dealt with my mom, the way that he dealt with my mom was he always tried to keep the peace, so he never wanted to, you know, he, he didn't want to engage in anything, so he was very, you know, uh, sort of, he would step back, and whatever it was that she was angry about, he would try to go ahead and make sure that he took care of whatever she was insisting that he do. Is it fair to say he did what she wanted? Yes, it's very fair to say he did. What, if anything, did you and Johnny do while your mother was hitting or attacking your father? We would, we would leave the area. We would run and hide. We would go to our, our room, uh, you know, either we'd go to our room together or, you know, depending on where we lived, you know, our, if our room was close, um, we would sort of run off and get away from it. How did your mother treat you and your brothers and sisters? Well, there's a, there's a similarity, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, in how she treated dad. Um, again, she was a very anxious, high strung. Uh, she screamed, she yelled, she hit, uh, she threw things, she called us names. You know, we each had our own little special uh, set of names. Some we wouldn't repeat, but um, so she gave each one of us a name. My, my name, for example, was uh, Violet, uh, which to some people, it, it wouldn't seem like it's anything, but Violet was my father's mother, and my mom hated my father's mother. So that was my special name, one of them. Did your mother have any special names for Johnny? <laughs> yes, she did. Um, she had a few. Again, some to not repeat. Um, her favorite, I think, was she called him One Eye. Um, and she called him that because uh, when he was young, the, the doctors thought he had a lazy eye, so they, they would put a patch on his good eye so that they would strengthen the other eye. So she used that as you know a way to find a, a new fun name for him. How did Johnny respond when your mother would call him one eye? 
he didn't respond in any negative way. That those names were, they were just a way of life. We we got used to them. We accepted all of it. Putting aside the names, did your mother ever get angry with you? Yes. Did your mother ever get physical with you? Yes, she did, but I was um, also very quiet, very shy, and I, I learned early on to stay back, um, so I was, I was more in the background because I would constantly sort of stay in the background to stay away from trouble. Ms. Dombrowski, when she, your mother did get physical with you, what forms did that take? Well, she would, she would hit us. Um, she would throw things. Uh, she would have us go pick a switch, you know, off of a tree, you know, so that that would be what she could hit us with and make sure that we got one that was nice and green. So why, that it, why, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Why did it have to be nice and green? Well, um, if it wasn't a nice green switch, twig, it would, it would snap. Those didn't break. If you got a dry one, they snap. They don't, they don't work the same. Did your mother ever get angry at Johnny? Yes. Did you ever observe your mother hitting Johnny? Yes. How, if at all, did Johnny react when his mother would hit him? He was a typical little boy where if it hurt, he would cry. Um, that was it. I mean, for the most part, you just wanted to get away from it. Did Johnny ever hit his mother back? No. What about when he got to be an older boy? Did he ever resist or hit her no. back? No. No. When he, when he was older, even if she hit or threw things, you, he never went to that place. He always, he would get away. He would, you know, leave the area, go to his room. Ms. Dombrowski, did there come a time when you left the family household? Yes. When did you leave the household? Um, I left when I was 17. Um, I was pregnant and got married and moved out into my own place. How did it feel when you left the family to go out and go to your own place? I think uh, there's a bittersweetness to it. Um, I, I was really young. I had just turned 17. Um, but I was so looking forward to this new life that I could create that was different from what we had at home. And uh, so it was a part of me that was really happy to, to be able to do this, really excited. And there was another part that was sad because I left behind my little brother and my dad. If you could explain that a bit, how, how did, if at all, did your experience with your mother affect your ideas about what you intended to do with your own family? Oh, um, really early on, um, as a young child, uh, None of what was happening in our home felt good. Um, and so as I got older, you know, both Johnny and I actually, um, we decided that once we left, once we had our own home, that we were never going to repeat ever anything similar in any way to our childhood. We were gonna, we were gonna do it different. So Johnny felt the same way? Absolutely. When you left the home to start your own family, who among the original four children were left at home with your mother? Johnny. Did there come a time when your parents separated? Yes. Would you please tell the jury what happened? There was a, a, our, our father one morning um, decided to uh, pack up everything and, and, and leave early in the morning. Um, we, didn't, we didn't know it at the time. 
uh, I don't think, but I, I didn't. I didn't live there. I was at work. <clears throat> and then I got a call from my mom in the afternoon right after she got off work. She called me, and, and I could... It was hard to understand her voice. Um, she sounded faint and uh, kind of kind of groggy, um, but she kept saying, he's gone, he's gone, he's gone. And I was trying to get out of her, was it dad? And she said, yes, uh, your, your daddy. And, and I said, mom, are you okay? What did you, what did you what's going on? You know, um, did you take your pills? Cause she took uh, what she called nerve pills. And she said she had, um, I asked how many, she, she couldn't tell me how many she took, but I knew she was getting fainter on the phone. And it was more clear to me that she was not in a, a good way. So I called, uh, I called our friend, uh, our, my, our parents' friend actually, who was a police officer, and told him that he needed to get to mom and what was going on, and so he got an ambulance to get over there to her. And this was after your father left? Yes, this is the day. Ms. Dombrowski, do you know why your father left? I know at the time, um, because I did try to speak to him after, because mom continued to not do well. Um, at the time, he said that he said that they had had the last argument that he felt that they could ever have. He felt he needed to leave home this time. And to be honest, I, I, I didn't really understand. Um, it had been so many years that he had been taking all of the, you know, um, all of her personality, um, and I didn't really understand exactly uh, fully what that last argument was, uh, why it was so intense. Um, we did learn many years later in our ad adult life that what he was referring to when he I'm said sure he... Just write all this around here as hearsay. I guess the objection is hearsay. Uh, Your Honor, again, I think it's, it, it's not offered for the proof. It's offered for or the, the, the abuse and the culture in which... <coughs> I'll sustain the objection. We'll Thank you, Your Honor. Yes. Did your mother uh, recover after she took the pills? Yes. She continued to not be well, but she, she recovered. And after that time, uh, did she ever take more than more pills than she should have? She did, but she didn't do it to the degree that she had at that point. And going back to the incident that you described, do you know where Johnny was at the time your mother took those pills? Johnny was home. Did there come a time? I'm oh, excuse me. I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I think he was. I think he was sleeping at the time. I think he woke up when mom came out and the ambulance came. So he, he saw all of that? Yes. Jackson Foundation. Did he see that? She, said, well, she I, testified he was in the home. He was in the home, but was she in the home? I guess, that, how did she know? So I, how, I'll sustain to a foundation. Thank you. Did there come a time <clears throat> when Johnny left his mother's house? Yes. And after Johnny, what did Johnny do when he left the house? Jackson Foundation. All right, I'll sustain his foundation if you want to lay his so, foundation. Um, are you in, were you in, in communication with your brother at the time? Yes, he, he came and lived with me for part of the time. So I think that, so what, what, was your, what did your brother do after he left your mother's house? He, he you know, lived in different places. He lived with me and he lived with another family. Did you and Johnny continue to communicate with your mother, Betty, after you both left the home? Yes. Yes, we did. And after what you have described, why did you and Johnny continue to communicate with your mother? Objection, foundation is to Johnny. 
I, th I think she's already laid the foundation. They're very close. She was in communication. I'll sustain the objection if you want for this okay. particular question. Why did you continue to communicate with your mother? Because she was our mom and we loved her. I mean, we, we knew, you know, even when we were younger that things weren't, they, they didn't feel right, you know, but, but what we understood was that, you know, mom had her own upbringing, you know, so she had her own past and the way she was raised would affect the way she lived. Um, and so she, in our mind, she was doing the best she could do. You know, um, we sort of treated it like he, 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 she she did the best that she could do with the tools that she was given, you know, um, from her her life in the past. And what we decided to do was we just decided to, to get new tools. We chose different tools from that. And when you say we, to whom are you referring? I'm, re I'm referring to Johnny. I'll, I'll overrule that objection. All right, next question. Thank you, Ron. Did you ever live with your mother again after you and Johnny had left the house? I did. I did uh, live with her briefly. Um, she had uh, gotten uh, diagnosed with asthma when we lived in Florida, and she needed to move to a, a drier climate. So um, Johnny moved her to uh, California, to Palm Springs, for the drier weather. And um, I moved also so that she wouldn't be alone. So I lived with her for a period then. And if you could just please elaborate on what role, if any, Johnny played in your mother's move to Palm Springs. He, he, was, he was the only reason the move could happen. He, he purchased her a home um, and, and paid to have everything moved out there. Did there come a time when your mother ever left Palm Springs? She, she moved from Palm Springs um, to be a bit closer to where Johnny and I lived in the LA area. She lived there for a bit and then ultimately she went back to Kentucky. Um, she had, her siblings were still there and a couple of them weren't doing well. So she wanted to be closer to them while she could. And after she moved back to Kentucky from Palm Springs, did there come a time when your mother became chronically ill? Yes. When was that? 2011. Would you please describe briefly uh, what her health condition was as of 2011? It, well, in 2011, um, she was living in Kentucky and we uh, uh, received a call that she had been diagnosed with uh, the final stages of Parkinson's. Um, but then when another doctor uh, looked at her scans, they, um, they felt it was something different. So we, we had the scans brought to a doctor in California, um, and they suggested that she come out and see a neurologist right away. So uh, Johnny got a plane, um, a, a private plane, and, and he and I, we flew to go pick her up and bring her back to California to start seeing the doctors. And when she moved back to two, in 2011 to California, was that a permanent move? It became basically a permanent move. Um, she still she still had her house in Kentucky, in the hopes of you know her being able to go back and forth. Um, but her health basically kept her in California, so she lived here or there. And by that time, 2011, when she's moved out to Los Angeles. Had her treatment of you and Johnny changed in any way? Yes, mom, mom softened as she aged. She, she totally softened. And once your mother moved to Los Angeles permanently in 2011, what role, if any, did your brother Johnny play in her caretaking? All right, I'll sustain as the foundation. Did. To what extent, if any, did your brother play any role in her caretaking? I think that's still a foundation objection. Do you, do you have knowledge of whether your brother had any role in her caretaking? Yes. Um, Would you please explain to the jury, because I think Her Honor needs to hear whether there's a foundation. Okay. 
I'm sorry. Um, yes, uh, when we brought mom out, you know, over, over time, she had multiple um, other uh, illnesses that, that came up. And uh, Johnny was, he, he dealt directly with the doctors like we did, um, hired private nurses so that we could make sure that, you know, mom was taken care of, you know, uh, he basically, Johnny was the finance, he took all financial responsibility for anything and everything that mom could need or want during this time. All, all medical care, doctors, hospitals, nurses. How do you know that? I was directly involved. Is it fair to say you saw Johnny do those things and yes. have those interactions? Yes, I was there. I was directly involved in all of that. Did you witness your brother having any interactions with the doctors relating to your mother's care? Yes. How yes. often, if at all, did your brother visit your mother, Betty, after she came to live in Los Angeles in 2011? Jackson Foundation. Were you ever present uh, with your brother and your mother when you all were visiting? Yes, um, mom lived in a house uh, that was basically a, a, across the street from Johnny. Um, it was a house that he has on his street. And uh, I, I was there, uh, you know, quite a bit. Johnny was pretty much down there every day, a couple times a day. Um, you know, m mom, like she would see them all the time. You know, one of her favorite things was watching Johnny take the kids to school and waving at them because she never got to do that before, so. Who were your brother's kids? Oh, um, Lily Rose and Jack. We'll get to that a little, uh, in a little bit. Um, did there come a time when the family was considering uh, putting your mother in a hospice? There was, um, there, were t there were conversations with the doctors that we should start to consider that since we, we weren't 100% sure with the variety of conditions that she had, um, what we needed to do. Um, the idea of hospice um, was something that felt like, since we, we, we didn't know a time frame, um, the idea of introducing uh, you know, a, a new nurses or something you know, uh, at a certain point in someone's life where they recognize there's a difference, um, and that could be that could be a, a, you know frightening for them. So we didn't want to instill any fear. You know, Johnny's big on mom not having fear. Um, so instead, that's when we hired nurses so that the nurses could be there 24/7, and you know, and sh and she would have people continuously throughout her life that she knew that they were friendly and you know uh, cared for. Did you actually have a conversation with your brother about the possibility of your mother going into hospice? Yes. Did, did he express an opinion about it? Yes, well this is where it all comes from because the idea, again, the idea of hospice, which is an amazing thing, but for someone who, when you don't know with the variety of illnesses, you don't know what a timing is, um, the idea of introducing it uh, new people is is something that becomes almost a signal, you know, and this was a very big discussion. This is why the nurses were hired. Was this just one discussion or was it a, a series of discussions? It's, I'm not uh, asking for hearsay. I'm just asking about the, whether it was discussed okay. once or a number of I'll times. overrule the objection. Go ahead. Was this just one discussion, or, or were there more discussions among you and your brother about how to care, how to best care for your mother? We we had we had continuous discussions. As a matter of fact, I mean, I, I there were daily updates. He knew every day, everything that was happening with mom. Whether he was in town, out of town, because he had to, he was working or traveling, he had. I made sure because it's hard when you know that someone wants to be there um, and they can't. So I, I made sure to to fill him in on everything. It's not offered for the truth of it. 
No, I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Did you ever see Johnny's children, Jack and Lily Rose, over at your mother's house across the street from Mr. Depp? Yes. Mr. Brosky, I'd like to change subjects uh, right now, if that's all right, and ask you to please tell us a little bit about your work life. Did there come a time when you worked in the entertainment industry? Yes. I started, I started uh, working when we moved from Florida to um, Palm Springs. This is why I lived uh, for a short period with my mom. Um, I ended up, I got a job um, at one of the studios in Los Angeles. Which studio was that? It was Columbia Pictures. I, I was, uh, my title was, I was an executive assistant to the executive vice president of comedy development. And what were your job responsibilities when you started there? I, I handled um, my executives, uh, daily schedule, meetings, budgets, scripts, um, phone calls. Uh, and then in addition to that, we had, uh, there were four other executives and they had assistants. So m my desk was also to oversee those assistants. And when we had writers come in, I oversaw those assistants as well. It sounds like a big job. It was a good job. <laughs> How long uh, did you work at Columbia Pictures Television in that role? I think it was about a year and a half. Why did you leave after a year and a half? Um, Columbia itself uh, started folding different departments and, and ours, our comedy development being one of them. Um, and so some of the employees that worked there went to work for Sony or TriStar, other sort of arms of the of the corporation, and I was the last one there, um, sort of wrapping up the department to go on to my next job. So after you wrapped up the trans transition, the closing up of the department, mm -hmm. what did you do in terms of your work life? I, I went to work with my brother. In what capacity? When you say your brother, which uh, to whom were you referring? When I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, when you say your brother, uh, to whom are you specifically referring? I, I went to work with my brother, Johnny. Uh, what type of things uh, did you do for your brother, Johnny? Um, similar things to what I was doing with uh, the other um, uh, boss that I worked for before, but um, with Johnny, he was, uh, I was helping him anyway uh, as a sister. Um, bits and pieces before I started working with him. So there were things like travel and, you know, meetings, setting meetings, making sure he had his, you know, the scripts that were coming in and he knew, you know, all the information about them. Um, and, you know, any kind of publicity stuff that he had to do. Uh, because it, it, I really started to do this job with him because there was one time that I had gone to his house and I was helping him get ready to go on a trip and his uh, ticket, I read it out loud and it said standby. And I said, why are you on standby? He had no one looking out for that kind of stuff. You know, so I did all of that. How, if at all, did your work for your brother change, <clears throat> change over time? Well, over time, it, it, it sort of grew. Um, well, not sort of, it did grow. Um, his agent, I worked uh, sort of hand in hand with his agent and, you know, as she got to know me more and I got to know her more, uh, there were other parts of her job actually that she would give to me. So, you know, instead of just doing scheduling meetings and calendars and travel, um, now I become a person who's talking to producers or, you know, as it expands, you know, all the executives at the studios and studio heads and, uh, be, you know, become a part of contract negotiation, etc. It just grew. What role, if any, did you play uh, in dealing with Johnny's movie contracts? Movie contracts, I, um, because I know the history and because um, there's a certain amount of uh, uh, parts of life that are important, you know, to a, a human being, not just to an actor, but to a human being. And I know the human being. Um, 
I, I was part of mostly um, negotiating parts like it, uh, there's an area called perks and perks means um, anything and everything that an actor would need in order to perform his duties and in order to you know to also move right to the to the location to do the duty so I, I was part of all important dates that you know needed to be considered in a calendar um, making sure the house was what he needed to have for the family, the travel to get there, making sure he had his staff, uh, drivers, security, uh, pretty much anything necessary was, was in that. Ms. Dombrowski, can you give the jury some examples of some of the things um, you put on the perks list? Uh, sure. Um, we, it was, uh, it was, really important um you know as johnny had a, a family it was really important to be able to uh, make sure that we um were given the opportunity to find the right accommodations and the accommodations for the children a, you know a house that you know could uh, you know um give them a home away from home with a garden um all all the travel to make sure that they all get there um there were really important dates that uh we carved out in every contract um, for Johnny's kids for their birthday. He, he never wanted to miss their birthday. So if he wasn't able to be with them because of filming, it was built into the contract that he had their birthday off and he would have the day before and the day after so that he'd be able to travel to get to them and then get back to working. Um, so in, in addition to that, I mean, there's, there's, there's quite a bit. Um, we also had it built in that if, if he was to be away from his kids filming, if the kids couldn't travel and the family couldn't travel to be there, um, we had in his contract that he would be able to fly back to them from wherever he is every two weeks. So he, he didn't go beyond every two weeks not seeing his children. You know, it, it's that kind of stuff that, you know, was important. Ms. Dombrowski, do you know what a personal manager is in the context of the entertainment world? I do. What, what is it, if you could explain it to the jury, because I just learned it myself. <laughs> well, I, I, I believe it's basically what I, <laughs> a lot of what I was doing. Um, they, um, they work with the, their clients on uh, maintaining different items in their personal life, as well as uh, you know, projects coming in, uh, production, um, all of the representatives. Um, it's a, it's a, it's sort of a big scope of, of uh, duties. Has anyone ever referred to you as Johnny's personal manager? I have been called that before. Yes. Do you perform uh, the responsibilities of your of jo being Johnny's personal manager? I I did, I did. Do you still work with Johnny? Yes. Do you also work with any of Johnny's companies? Or strike that, uh, does, does your brother have any companies associated with him? Uh, he has a production company called Infinitum Nile. What type of company is Infinitum Nile? It's a production company. We develop, you know, projects uh, for films or television or, you know, different things. And put it, putting aside your responsibilities as your brother's personal managers, what role, if any, do you play in Infinitum Nile? Uh, I'm president of Infinitum Nile. When did you start working at Infinitum Nile? Um, from the beginning, um, in, in 2004. I think we started in July 2004. And would you please explain to the jury uh, some of the th some of your responsibilities as president of Infinitum Nile? My my duties as president were to I oversaw um, everything within the company, um, the the staff where we were developing projects. Uh, where you know the, maybe there's a book that people want to develop into a film or a TV show or different ideas. So I oversaw that, oversaw all the all of the development, um, 
their schedules with meetings uh, with different people to go, to take those projects out um, to to pitch. Uh, I, I, it, I, there's so many uh, tasks in that job. I don't know how to I don't know how to really lay them out. Ms. Dombrowski, when did the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie come out? I, I think it was 2003, I think. What, what was your brother's role in Pirates? Um, he, he was Captain Jack Sparrow. Fair to say that was the lead? That was, that was the lead. How did the first Pirates of the Caribbean movie fare at the box office? It, 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 it did very well. I think it surprised people and did very well. Um, people really, they loved, you know, the, they loved the entertainment of it, you know, the, the total ride. Did the success of Pirates 1 change Johnny's career in any way? I, I would have to say yes. Um, the success of Pirates 1, it, it became, um, Johnny, with that role and, and other studios and everybody seeing the success of that film and, and, and how the audiences reacted to that character, um, they were, there was a whole lot more people wanting to be in business with him. And did the success of Pirates 1 change his personal life in any way? It or did. his day-to-day -day life? It, it, it did, it did. Um, because where prior to that, you know, he was able to go out um, somewhat, you know, he could, you know, go to different stores, go to bookstores, go to restaurants. Um, when Pirates One came out, after that, he was much more recognizable now. You know, so many people loved that character, and so he was much more recognizable. So it, it became harder for him to, to go out in public without having a lot of people come around that, you know, rightfully so, wanted to meet him. And, um, but then it, it, it also became uh, really big, and so we had even people that were chasing, you know, chasing in cars. So we had to, at that point, we had to, we had to ta have, get security team to kind of come in and help us manage how this all works, you know. Who is Jerry Judge? Jerry Judge was, he was basically Johnny's head security. When did Jerry Judge start coming to work with, with your brother? Well, we, um, we started working with Jerry Judge back in the 90s. Because um, Jerry had his own security company in London. And uh, when we would go over there for press or premieres or whatever, Jerry was the one you know, that set everything up. And, and we became really close with him back then. And as things grew with pirates, we brought him over more and more, you know, for some of the items that we had, some of the work that he had, if it was a show or whatever, um, or, and brought him on. And then he started just working basically on every film with us after pirates, probably right around that time. How long did Jerry Judge work with you and Johnny? Well, again, um, we met him in the 90s, so in around Pirates is what, 2003? Um, and Jerry was with us up until we, uh, we lost him. Wh when did you lose him? Uh, we lost him a couple years ago to cancer. What was Jerry's relationship like with Johnny? <laughs> um, Jackson Foundation, Ron. Did you ever see Jerry Judge <laughs> interact with your brother? I'll sustain the objection. That's the, leading, the, the next question, that's fine. Thank, right, thank you, Your Honor. What, what, if any, um, observations did, were there any times when you saw your brother interact with Jerry Judge? I, I, saw, I saw the two of them interact quite a lot. Um, and uh, they, they, they loved each other. They were like, you know, Jerry thought of him as his, like a son and sometimes as a brother. <laughs> um, they really did love each other and so much respect both ways. Move to strike all of that. I don't think there's any basis no. to strike that. I think it was most responsive. To the I'll overrule the objection. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. 
And I wanted to touch on something you mentioned a, a few moments ago uh, when you were referring to um, Mr. Depp's children. I believe you said it was uh, daughter Lily Rose and son, son Jack. Jack. Who is the mother of Johnny's children? Vanessa uh, Paradis. Did Johnny and Vanessa Paradis ever live together as a couple? Yes. How long did Johnny and Vanessa Paradis live together as a couple? I, I, I think they were together 14 years, I think. And did their children live with them during the 14 years? Yes. How much time would you say you spent with Johnny, Vanessa, Lily Rose, and Jack? When, when they were in Los Angeles, I, I would say I saw them all daily. Um, our office, where we work, our office is only, it was only 10 minutes from their house, so I would make trips back and forth, or every day after work, I would go straight to the house. So I, I saw them daily. Would you please explain to the jury what it was like spending time with Johnny and his family? It was great. Um, it was great. It was a normal, happy family, you know. Uh, you go there and the kids are playing and, you know, making dinner, everybody having dinner, cleaning up together, sitting around, laughing. It was, it was great. Did you have occasion to see your brother interact with his children? Yes. Yes, I did. <laughs> what did you observe? What, what can you tell the jury about what you observed? Um, he's... I'm proud to say he's uh, he's one of the most devoted fathers I think that I've ever seen. Like everything, uh, everything in life was about the children. But when he was with the kids, like the attention that he would give them, you know, it was just constant playing with them, listening to them, you know laughing with them, reading to them, Barbies, I mean, you, you name it, and he, he was there. Did you ever observe Johnny treating his children the way you saw his mother treat him no. when he was young? No. Have you ever seen Johnny hit either of his children? No. Have you ever heard your brother raise his voice at his children? No. You may have touched on it earlier, and if so, I apologize. But how, if at all, did Johnny communicate with his children when he was shooting a film? Objection, foundation. Were you? I'll right, sustain the objection if you want to lay the foundation. Did, um, fair, fair. Understood. Okay. Uh, did you have occasion to observe? Were you ever with your brother when he, he was shooting a film? Yes. Did you have occasion to observe your brother communicating with his children while you both were there on set? Yes. Yes. So when, with that, when, I'm please sorry. go. No, please go ahead. When, <clears throat> excuse me, when, when Johnny was filming, most of the time, um, the family was with him. The family would travel and go, you know, it was like I said earlier, um, we would get a house and garden and, and all of that to make sure that there was a home. So his family was with him most of the time. What about when the children got older and they started going to school? Did that change in any way? It, it changed in that um, they, you know, they didn't want to disrupt the children's lives when they were going to school. So if, if dad had to go off and go work and the children stayed home, um, this is where we get into, we still, we still maintained a home for the family wherever he was filming, you know, um, because they would, if they had the opportunity to come back and forth. Um, and, but at the same time, Johnny would, he would travel back every two weeks you know, to see his kids. And when you say he would travel back, who was it who made those travel arrangements? I, I made the travel arrangements. Did you have occasion 
to observe Johnny interact with the mother of his children, Vanessa Paradis, over the 14 years they were together? Yes, I did. Would you please tell the jury what you observed about the interactions between Mr. Depp and Vanessa? This is not, this is directly relevant. I'll allow observations. I'll overrule the objections. <clears throat> Thank you very much, Your Honor. What did you observe about Mr. Depp's interactions with the mother of his children? They, they were a, a, a great couple. I mean, first you could see that they were friends. Um, they, they just, they were happy together. They, they, you know, um, they got along great. It was, it was a, a happy, normal. I'll, I'll, right, I'll sustain the objection at this point then. Thank you. All right. Did you ever hear your brother yell at Vanessa? No. Yes, sir. It's not leading. To what extent, if any, have... have well, that, that wasn't the question, Mr. Chair. Or, of course, the main objection. Okay. I'll, I'll sustain on that objection. Next question. What, if any, violence did you uh, observe between... I'll, I'll go ahead, finish your question first. Well, if, if I think you're going to sustain the <laughs> objection, perhaps I should read. Maybe we read. should move on, yes. Okay. okay. All right. Did Vanessa ever claim that Johnny ever physically abused her? Jack, no. Foundation, alter hearsay. All right. Hearsay objection? It's not, it's not offered for the proof of the, it's what she observed. What she heard, she was the personal manager, Your Honor. That would be hearsay. I'll sustain the objection. Thank you. Did there come a time when Johnny and Vanessa separated after 15, 14, 14 years? Yes. How would you describe their relationship today? Same objection, four to four. All right. She's for hearsay as well, and foundation. I don't think it calls for hearsay, Your Honor. She's the She's his I sister. understand, but it's a character evidence issue, so I'll sustain the objection. Who is Amber Heard? Um, my brother's ex-wife. When did you first meet Amber Heard? I first met her when she uh, came to the office um, for casting on Rum Diary, um, probably late. 2008, I think, Some, somewhere in there. Did you see Miss Heard on set? Yes. What, if anything, did you observe? When she was working on set, um, I mostly observed, you know, some of the, you know, I, I was there for some of the scenes. Um, and in, in, in between, you know, she was a bit sort of like, you know, standoffish, had all, you know, people, you know, coming around her, but I don't really, I don't really have that much time with her on set. When was um, Rum Diary actually released? 2011. Was Johnny in that movie? Yes. What role, if any, did you have with respect to Rum Diary? I was one of the producers. And after seeing Ms. Heard on the set in 2009, 2010, when was the next time you saw Ms. Heard? I think the, the next time I saw her was we were, um, we were, we were promoting Rum Diary towards the end of 2011, I think. Um, I was not able to go on the full promotional tour um, where we do uh, um, screenings for people around the country. Um, but I was able, because my mom was sick, but I was able to attend uh, the one in Los Angeles. So I saw her at that event. What uh, did you observe? So you attended the premiere? I attended the premiere and, uh, and um, the dinner afterward, yes. Would you please describe for us what you observed at the premiere? 
at the dinner. At the dinner. Because I, I, I sat outside at the premiere. I didn't actually watch the movie. I'd already seen it. Um, I sat at the same table um, with some of the other uh, people involved in the cast. So I saw um, Johnny and Amber, you know, they were seated together. I saw them talking quite a bit and she seemed very friendly that night, yes. Did there come a time when you learned that Johnny and Amber were romantically involved? Yes. When was that? I, I don't recall exactly. I, I know it was some time after the Rum Diary premiere. To what extent did you have occasion to observe Johnny and Miss Her together early in their relationship? I would see them. There were times when she would come and, and you know, visit our, our mom, you know. Um, I would see her then, I would see the two of them then. Um, I didn't really spend a tremendous amount of time with her. Had you formed any impression of Miss Heard at that time based on your observations? I, I, I did, um, I did. Look, um, I didn't. I didn't know her very well, um, and I would spend time. Like I said, she would. You know, she would come to my mom's house. I've, I've sat with her and my mom. Um, Check on four four. Yeah. What was your impression of Amber? Based on her observation, she's describing what she observed. Do you want to? I don't, I don't think that's right, Your Honor. I think she's describing what she observed. Right. Okay, we're going to approach for a moment. We'll stop. Did there come a time when your um, did there come a time when your brother and Miss Heard started to live together? Yes. And when did that occur, approximately, if you recall? I don't. I don't recall the timing. Um, I don't recall the time frame. I, I believe. They had moved downtown um, to the Eastern Columbia building, but I don't remember exactly when that was. Uh, what type of structure was the Eastern Columbia building? Was that a freestanding house or was it apartments? It, it's apartments and he had, uh, he had the penthouses on the top floor. How many penthouses did your brother own on the top floor of the Eastern Columbia building? I think it was, I think it was five apartments. Do you know who lived in those five apartments when your brother and Miss Heard went to live there? I know, um, I, I know who lived down there. Um, I, I know Isaac, a, a, a friend of Johnny's named Isaac lived down there. Um, I know uh, Amber's friend Rocky and her boyfriend uh, lived in one of the penthouses. Um, Amber's sister, Whitney, lived in one of the penthouses. When you say Rocky, are you referring to Rocky Pennington? Yes. And was her boyfriend Josh Drew? Josh Drew. Did uh, Rocky Pennington and Josh Drew uh, pay any rent to your brother? 
No. What about um, Ms. Hurd's sister, Whitney? Did she pay any rent to your brother? No. Do you, do you know why uh, your brother allowed them to live rent free in his in his uh, at the ECV because they were they were uh, wait, hold on I'm sorry ma'am I'm sorry uh, foundation we asked do you know why so if she knows she can answer I'll allow it I'll overrule she was his personal okay. manager that's fine go ahead did you arrange for uh, handling a lot of your brother's uh, bills I, I I would give them to the business manager yeah. um but I I. I, I believe they were Amber's family and friends. That's why he let them live there. How often did you see your brother when he was living with Miss Hurd at the ECB penthouses? We didn't. We didn't see him as often. I didn't see him as often. Um, he pretty much stayed down there he didn't come back you know towards where we were in West Hollywood uh, very often unless he had a reason to and on those occasions when you did see your brother what observations did you make he uh he was always in a hurry when he was able to come back. He, you know, he, he could never sit and spend the time. You know, he. It, it felt like he was always trying to, you know, get back uh, downtown. He, he, he just seemed so much sadder. He did not seem himself. He was, he was always. His his. His person was much. Uh, just sadder. Did in that time period when your brother and Miss Hurd were living at the ECB, did you have occasion to observe them together? On occasion. Would you please describe for the jury what you observed on those occasions when you saw your brother and Miss Hurd together? I mean, there's different occasions of. I've, I've seen them together when they've come into the office. I mean, um, when you saw them together, did they appear to get along? Objection, Your Honor. They and leading. All right, I'll, I'll sustain this to leading. All right, next question. Did you ever? Witness them arguing. Objection. Leading. All right. I'll sustain us. I'll sustain us to leading. Did, in your capacity as Johnny's personal manager, do you know whether your brother and M Amber ever traveled, uh, ever traveled together? Yes, they did travel together. There were, uh, I mean, there were times when, you know, when Johnny had to go do press or film, they traveled together. What type of travel arrangements did you make for the two of them when they traveled together? Um, we, we would get a, a private plane that took them to whatever the destination was. Um, and make sure that we had, you know, the hotel accommodations uh, taken care of. Um, part part of part of what we did uh, was to always make sure that we anticipated, you know, everything. So we would do the uh, the travel, the hotels, uh, cars, drivers. Um, I would I would make sure that there was an extra hotel room, you know, for trips when they would go. Would you? Why did you make sure there was an extra hotel room when Johnny and Miss Hurd went on trips together? 
because they're objection to the extent that the answer calls for hearsay. All right. I don't believe it does. Okay, that's fine. You can answer, ma'am. Oh, thank you. Um, I, I booked the extra hotel rooms um, because <clears throat> if Johnny was at home um, or you know anywhere like that, he was able to. If they argued, he was able to leave the room, leave the argument, and go like he's always done and hide in a different room to get away from it. When when they were traveling for, you know, the different reasons for press or whatever, um, and we booked the hotel rooms, I wanted to make sure that there was an extra room, you know, because it, it wasn't unusual, you know what I mean, for them to have an argument. So I wanted to make sure that there was an extra room. Did your brother ever have occasion to use that extra room that you booked for him? Yes. Objection foundation. All right. I'll sustain his foundation if you want to lay a foundation. I think the foundation was she made all of the travel arrangements. Well, I can actually lay it through okay. some other questions as okay. well. She was person personal manager. Um, whose idea was it to book an extra room for your brother when he traveled? It, it, it was my idea. And it, why did you do that? It, it was my idea because, you know, um, I saw a repeat happening in life when we were when we were kids and and arguments and fighting would start to happen. Our first thing was to go and hide and you know uh, get away from it. And since I recognized uh, what felt to be a, 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 a pattern that was a repeat pattern from his childhood, um, I I wanted to make sure that there was a place that he could do just that. Mr. Chu, the question was, do you, did, did Mr. Depp ever use the extra room? And the objection was foundation. So if you want to lay a foundation of how she would have known that he used an extra room, and if not based on hearsay, that's, that's the issue. And I move to strike that. It's not the shock. All right. I'll, I'll, I'll strike that. Okay. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. Did you ever book an extra, did you book your brother's hotel accommodations during the 14 years that he, when he was with Vanessa Paradis? Yes. Did you ever book an extra room when he was with her? Objection leading. No. Overall, I'll allow that one. Go ahead. If you could repeat it, I don't think the jury heard that. I'm sorry. No, I did not. Did you ever hear your brother and Miss Heard argue? Objection. No. Oh, I'll overrule that. I'm good. So you may answer that. No. Did you ever see or hear any physical altercation between your brother and Ms. Hurd? No. What can you tell us about what you did observe of your brother and Ms. Hurd together? What, to, to me, um, to, when I saw them, to me, um, he was always trying to make sure, he was always trying to make her happy. Um, he, he always made effort to to sort of make her happy. I, I, uh, I, I think she had a very, uh, she has a very strong personality. Um, and, and my brother's personality came off much more soft at that point to me. Did you observe any occasions in which Ms. Hurd was nice to your brother. Yes, I've seen her be nice to him. Would you please explain that? I, 
Um, I've, 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 I've seen her be nice in, in you know, uh, you know, offering to, you know, uh, bring him a drink or, you know, uh, get him whatever. I mean, just a typical, like a typical nice. I've seen that. Have you witnessed any occasions on which Ms. Heard wasn't nice to your brother? I, I have, actually. Would you please describe those to the jury? Yeah. Um, we had, um, I had had a, on one occasion, because this one, this one really, this one really stayed with me. Um, on on uh, one occasion, um, we were, I was at the office and I'd had a meeting um, with, Dior, who had wanted to uh, sit with Johnny and um, talk about, you know, working together. And Amber had come in and asked if she was interrupting us, and uh, we said no, and we weren't supposed to really talk about the meeting with anyone. Um, but Johnny, Johnny told Amber that uh, I had just had a meeting with Dior, and that, you know, they were interested in him, um, her her reaction to that was she was in disbelief and sort of disgust um, because she said, "Dior, why why would Dior want to do business with you? They're about class and they're about style, and you don't have style, you know." So it was a the insulting kind of taking away that one moment, you know, that insult is there. You know, I've 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 seen I've seen the insults uh, m multiple times actually. What, if anything, did you hear Miss Hurd say about Mr. Depp's physical appearance? She called him an old fat man. How did he respond? He, he had, he, I believe he's heard her call him that himself. Now, Ms. Dombrowski, I'd like to ask you about a specific event that is relevant to this case. Um, and just for, to, for the background, I'll say, did, did there come a time in 2013 when your brother was working with Keith Richards of the Rolling Stones on a documentary? Yes. Were you present? Yes, I was, I was present at the... Was Miss Heard there as well? Yes. If you could please tell the jury how physically close you were or how far you were from Miss Heard while the three of you were on the set. I was, I was, um, I was right next to her. Um, they had, they had uh, gotten there, and I was close enough that I hugged her, um, and and was standing next to her. It was a small set. And when you were standing next to her, and when you were hugging her, what, if any, marks or physical injuries did you see? I, I didn't see anything. Did you observe your brother's interactions with Ms. Hurd while the three of you were on the set? Yes. What, if anything, did you observe her doing? They, they, they were fine. They, she was laughing and happy and holding his hand and, you know, leaning on him, hugging him. Did, did did your brother hug him back? Or hug her back? Yes, but it was mostly her hugging. And, and switching switching subjects from that uh, time on the set, did there come a time when you learned that Johnny was going to marry Miss Heard? 
Yes. And this is a little complicated, so I'm just going to ask you in a, in a narrative form. Uh, I understand there was a, a, a wedding and that there was a, there were a couple of ceremonies. If you could just please describe that to the jury. Um, they, uh, there was a wedding uh, celebration that was uh, put together um, on the island. So uh, they had a, a, like a, a wedding ceremony on the island. Um, but prior to uh, going to the island to do that, they actually got married in Los Angeles. Um, because they, they had to get married in Los Angeles because they couldn't get married, you know, uh, paperwork, et cetera, um, on the island. So they got married in L.A. How did you learn that they were going to get married? We were, we were already working on um, the celebration part, and I knew, I knew that the date was at some point, um, they were going to pick a date to, to try to get married in Los Angeles. Um, but I didn't, I didn't know the actual date that had been decided until he called me, which was pretty much right before the date. What was your reaction upon hearing from your brother that he was going to marry Miss Hurd? I was, uh, I was um, scared. I was devastated, actually, that it was, uh, was going to happen as, as, uh, as quickly as it was being pushed for. Um, I, I actually tried to talk him into just, just waiting a little bit longer, just a little bit and not, not rushing. Why did you want him to wait a little bit longer? There had been, there had been conversations about a prenuptial agreement that had been going on for a while. Um, and as the date was approaching, you know, for the island ceremony, um, there was no success in the prenuptial conversations. And I knew it was important. Um, his representatives had explained the importance, and I knew it was important to him for his children. And I, we were rushing to do something without his children being protected. Specifically, if you could explain to the jury what involvement you had in those discussions about a prenuptial agreement. Um, Jackson just foundations She's testified yeah. about her. Uh, I'll allow it. Go ahead. Thank you, Your Honor. I think um, what was your involvement in the discussions involving the prenuptial, a prenuptial agreement? Uh, mostly it was, uh, I spoke with um, the attorneys and the representatives so that they, they explained the importance of it and, the, and they explained the reasons behind it. We describe hearsay. No, I'll, I'll allow it. That means you can keep going. Okay, so I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, so that uh, so that we could have further conversation and, and uh, with with Johnny and and they there was a, an attorney that they coordinated with for um, for Amber. Um, so that that was where I was involved in the coordinating that part. Which side wanted a prenup? Johnny's side wanted a prenup. And I believe what you said may have gotten lost. Why did Johnny's side want a, a prenup? Well, the prenup was to, to make sure that his children were protected. That's Jack and Lily Rose? Jack and Lily Rose, yes. Did your brother and Miss Hurd ever sign a prenup? No. Why not? I, I, Amber didn't sign it. Did you end up, despite your misgivings, did you end up attending the wedding uh, between, or the ceremony, 
between your brother and Miss Heard on the island in the Bahamas. Yes, I did, but I, I also attended the actual wedding um, in Los Angeles. And that's, that preceded the celebration yes. in the Bahamas, is that correct? Yes. Did you have occasion to speak with Ms. Heard either at the ceremony, the formal ceremony in Los Angeles or the celebration in the Bahamas? I did. Um, at the actual, at the actual ceremony um, in Los Angeles, they they uh, they had the ceremony at our our mom's house, um, and at that ceremony, I didn't have occasion to really speak with Amber. Um, she, Rocky, and Whitney, I, I don't believe, uh, wanted necessarily to speak with me um, on that day. I did. I did, after the ceremony was done, um, I was standing not far from them and they were having a conversation. Um, they were having a conversation actually about, <clears throat> excuse me, about uh, should they leak the uh, information that they had already gotten married at the house uh, to the press so that they could, maybe they didn't have to worry about the island when they did the celebration. Um, and Amber, Amber actually uh, reached out to me and said, because I was standing seven, eight feet away from her, um, asked my opinion, you know, what I thought about that, which I, I basically said I didn't know why they would do it since all the information for the island was already out and that it wasn't going to help them. I didn't know why they would want to leak, leak it at all, but it was up to them. When I saw her on the island as well. Um, but on the island, she was actually extremely friendly uh, when when I got there, because if I'm honest, um, I, I debated going. I, I I I didn't really want to. Um, I almost didn't, but I I took my dad. Dad wanted to go, and uh, I wanted to make sure that I showed up anyway, because I wanted to make sure that. Honestly, that my little brother would know that I was going to be—I was always going to be around no matter what. Um, but Amber was extremely friendly and thanked me for coming to her special day. You know, it was a very big day for her. Can you remember any other interactions you had with Miss Heard or your brother on the island at the celebration? Hmm. Interactions on the island? Not really. And when was the ne next time you saw Amber Heard after the celebration on the island? It was, it would have been, it would have been when she came back from Australia. And I, I, I will get to that, Your Honor. Um, is it possible for us to take a very quick break? Sure. Are you going to? You, you still have quite a bit of direct left, I assume. Oh, uh, I do have a, a fair amount, Your okay. Honor. Okay. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, well, we go ahead and have you take your afternoon break of 15 minutes, okay? Again, don't do any outside research and do not talk to anybody about the case. I know you're going to hear me say it so much. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. I haven't said yet, <laughs> so, so let's see. I'm gonna make sure, I haven't said yet, no, it's okay. I usually wait till the jury goes out, so we can make sure. All right, so why don't we just go ahead and make it at 3.30 then, so it's close enough, we'll take 15 minutes for 3 then? Okay, Your Honor, we'll take it. Yes, one sure. Could, would you mind instructing a witness? I think this will go for all the witnesses that on the brace, they're not to discuss their testimony. All right. You understand that, you, ma'am, since you are right now uh, on the stand, you can't discuss this case, not even with the attorneys, okay? So don't discuss it with anybody until we get you back here in 15 minutes, okay? All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. 